Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. We are back at it with a Warden Healer build for Update 34, The High Isle. With the Warded class having a really strong healing base skill line, this will give us more options to use in supporting our group with. I found that the Wardens work really well as an AoE healer due to the majority of their skills are area of effect, making them a really good choice for beginners to use. With some practice can make them expert healers in no time. Now, I will be covering two setups for the build, with a starter setup for players at level 300 CP, then moving into an advanced setup. So, I will be going over the stats on the build, what skills I like to use, passives that are essential for the build, what gear makes this build tick, and last, the CP setup. All of this is coming up next. Let's dive into the build. We're going to start with our advanced setup. So let's buff ourselves up. In our character sheet, max magicka is sitting at 33,200 with a max health of 24,000, max stamina at 14,000. Now we can increase our recoveries a little bit by going to our back bar, applying our ability here. And we have a magicka recovery of 3,200, health recovery at 571, and stamina recovery at 958. Our spell damage can go up as well by applying this. With a spell damage of 3,400, Spell critical sitting at 29.4%. Attributes on the build, we have 64 points into Magicka. The reason for this is the more Magicka we have, the stronger our heals will be, and the more resources we have to apply Magicka abilities, such as healings and buffing our team members. Now for the Boon or Munda Stone we are running on the build, we are running the Ritual. This will increase our healing done by 12%. Now, through my testing, I found out that the Ritual actually outperforms Spell Damage or Critical Chance on this build. Granted, Critical Chance would give us better chances to increase our Critical Chance, maybe to give us more healing, but I just found the overall strength of the healing to be done better with the Ritual here. So you can choose to, if you want to have Critical Chance, you could have Spell Damage, you can increase your Max magic if you want more, you could do more health if you feel like health is low on the build or magicka recovery if you feel like ma that magicka recovery is not enough at sitting at 3200 choices there are yours let's go over into the skills now so before we go into the skills on the build just letting you know that the way i have my skills set up does not mean this is a way that you need to have it lined up if you prefer Growing Swarm to be X, do so on your build. This is the way it flows for me, and this is the way I like it. However, do be aware that if you do take skills off of this bar, that there are reasons why these skills are on this bar that we will cover later on in the passives. So, let's begin with our first ability, starting off in the Green Balance skill line. First ability, the second one to unlock, starts off as Healing Seed. We then morph it to Budding Seed. We can cast this at 28 meters with an 8 meter radius. This will have a field of flower which bloom over after 6 seconds, healing us and allies in the area for a lot of health. While the field is growing, us and our allies in the area also get healed every 1 second. Now, we can activate this ability again to cause, cause it to instantly bloom, which means basically a burst heal if we need to, especially if someone's running low on health and really needs a lot of instant healing this works really really well for that now we also like this ability due to the fact that this has a synergy tied to it so allies can activate the harvest synergy to heal themselves a good amount of health or five seconds next ability we have is in the restoration staff skill line it is the first ability to unlock starts off as grand healing we then morph it to illustrious healing this is 28 meters out that we can cast this with an eight meter radius which will use our Staff Spirit to heal us and our allies in the target area for some health, and then the additional health every one second for 12 seconds. So this is kind of quite nice. I like to especially stack this with my Budding Seeds just to really give off a lot of healing over time. But you can cast both Budding Seeds and Illustrious Heals in two different directions, especially if you have two different groups in area. 
Next ability we have is still in the Restoration Staff skill line. It is the second ability to unlock starts off as Regeneration. We then morph it to Radiating Regeneration. This is 20 meters out that it sends out, and we will use our life given staff energy to heal us and up to three nearby allies for a lot of health over the 10 seconds. Now what this means basically is that we will either heal ourselves or two other allies when we cast it if we are in a four man group or we will heal three allies with it. So I typically like to double cast this due to the fact that it just gives us a better chance of healing us and two other allies or three other allies within the two casts. That way we have everybody covered in a four man group. Next ability we have is all the way up into the green or into the animal companion skill line. It is the third ability to unlock starts off a swarm. We then morph it to growing swarm. This is for 28 meters out there with a 5 meter radius. Yes, this is a stamina based ability instead of the magicka based one. Just for the fact that we can sustain our magic a little bit better. And since we don't use a lot of stam, this works a little bit better. So what this does is it has swarm attack an enemy causing them to bleed over the 10 seconds. Now. We really wanted to cast this due to the fact that this will afflict them with minor vulnerability for the duration increasing their damage taken by 5% so our DPS can hit them a little bit harder for that duration. Now why we like this more for the other one is because this growing swarm actually causes enemies near the carrier to take bleed damage as well every 2 seconds for the duration. So we kind of have like an AoE damage ability especially if we are dealing with a lot of adds or a lot of things. Now just keep in mind this one you can only have one growing swarm active at, at a time. So try to always pick the biggest or meanest target out there. Especially the one with the most health because that is probably going to most likely be the most dangerous one out there. Next ability we have is back down into the restoration staff skill line. With the third ability to unlock starts off as blessing of protection. And then we morph it to combat prayer. This is a 20 by 8 meter area. So what that means is it's it's 8 meters wide by 20 meters deep. Kind of think of it as a rectangle area that will last for 10 seconds. This will heal us and allies in front of us for a good amount of health. But we really like to apply this due to the fact that we give us and allies minor berserk and minor resolve, increasing us and our allies at damage done by 5% and physical resistance and spell resistance by 2,900 for 10 seconds. So we kind of give our allies a little bit of mitigation especially from damage so they don't take as much damage on top of really increasing their damage done so that way they can really nuke things down so if you apply combat prayer to them and then have our growing swarm dps are going to hit quite significantly better already now ultimate on this bar is all the way up into the green bound skill line it starts off as to include a grove we then morph it to healing thick the this has a range of 28 meters and a radius of 8 meters this will instantly heal the most injured friendly target in that area for a good amount of health and the forest continues to heal us and our allies in the area every one second for six seconds now what i really like about this morph of it over the other one is this one will end up having heal over time for us and our allies after we leave the healing thicket for four seconds after it so instead of a six second duration if we are in there for the whole duration, it will be a 10 second duration of healing done to us. And why this morph or the other one is because of that. The other morph gives us ultimate and I just figured we have more healing potential with this one. Now let's go into our back bar. Starting with our first ability all the way down into the undaunted skill line. With the fifth ability to unlock Stark's up as a Necrot Orb, we then morph it to Energy Orb. This will have an orb that will slowly float forward to healing everyone in the area get amount of health every second for the duration to us and our allies we also like this because allies can activate a synergy called healing combustion that causes the orb to explode and heal them for a good amount of health on top of it nearby allies will also restore 3900 magicka or stamina based on the activator's max magicka so if they're magicka dps they will get magicka if they're a stamina dps they'll get stamina and tanks, whichever one's higher, magic or stamina, and us, we can't use it. So it's really nice to give out synergies, and this is just another way for us to give out a synergy. Next ability we have is in the Destruction Staff skill line. It is the second ability to unlock starts off as Wall of Elements. 
we then morph it to element blockade. This is a 12 meter or 18 meter by 12 meter area, so another rectangle shape, 12 meters wide by 18 meters deep, that will put a barrier in front of us, dealing some damage to enemies in the target area every one second. And for us, it will be a blockade of storm, so they will take shock damage. And we can set concussed enemies off balance for seven seconds, so there is another debuff. Now the reason why we want a lightning staff here on top of it too is let's go into our help section with tutorials and combat. With status effects here, shock as it reads there is an instant damage and can apply minor vulnerability for 4 seconds increasing the damage taken. So if we are able to apply this status effect with our elemental of or blockade of storms then enemies get minor vulnerability. So that gives us another way instead of our growing swarm to apply modern vulnerability to enemies especially if we're dealing with multiple adds this is a, another way of dealing with those now next ability we have is up into the green balance skill line with the first ability to unlock starts off as fungal growth we then morph it to enchanted growth this is a cone area so pretty much like a triangle starting from your your position out 20 meters so the further you are away from the target the bigger your area is to hit people with so this will heal us and our allies in front of us for a good chunk of health now we really like to cast this due to the fact is we apply minor intellect and minor endurance to any ally that we heal in that area which increases our magicka and stamina recovery by 15 percent for 20 seconds so this is one way why our recovery can hit very good heights but it will also help our allies as well now next ability we have is back down into the destruction staff skill end with the first ability to unlock starts off as force shock we then morph it to crushing shock this will cast an element with our energy of staff that blasts the enemy with some flame damage frost damage and shock damage now the enemies that are hit with this that are casting will be set off balance and stunned for three seconds so it's another way to interrupt enemies so if your tank is at a distance where they cannot get to an enemy who is channeling or casting, this is a good for you to then apply this crushing shock to interrupt that enemy so that way the channeling is not affecting you and your allies because most of the time in dungeons or in trials, one of the mechanics there needs an interrupt usually to, be, to stop the damage ongoing. So make sure to have crushing shock. Now our next ability we have is still in the destruction staff skill line. It is the fourth ability to unlock starts off as weakness to elements. We then morph it to elemental drain. This is up to 28 meters that we can cast it. This will afflict enemies with a major breach for 23 seconds, reducing their physical and spell resistance. So why is this important is every enemy and veteran content has 18,200 physical and spell resistance. The lower you get their resistance, the stronger your DPS are going to hit. So this is very helpful. Yes, I do know that tanks run pierce armor, which applies minor breach and major breach already but for us we like to apply this especially for the team is we can give everybody minor magic to steal on the target which will cause us and our allies to restore a 168 magicka every one second when damaging them so this is another way to keep up our magicka recovery up a little bit along with keeping magicka going for tanks because they will use that resource usually to keep themselves alive or buff them themselves up along with magicka dps to deal some more damage damn dps if they have some magic based abilities as well this will help them sustain it since they won't have a very high magic recovery now there are different flex spots for those if you want to you can change especially on this bar your crushing shock or elemental drain if you don't prefer to use those or don't need to here are some other good choices like in the animal companion skill line with the fourth ability to unlock starts off as betty netch we then morph it to blue betty this is on herself for 25 seconds which restores some magicka to us over the 25 seconds so you got to have this up the entire time to get as much magicka over those 25 seconds but this gives us major brutality and sorcery increasing our weapon and spell damage by 20 percent so this will help us have stronger heals and we also get a cleanse from this every five seconds we will remove one negative effect from us though so i would say this is really nice for beginners out there to use especially if you don't have a potion that gives you major sorcery on your build since spell pots are kind of expensive and it costs a lot of resources just to make next ability is winter's embrace 
with the first ability to unlock Star's Office, Frost Cloak with them, or for two expands the Frost Cloak. This is 36 meters out. For 20 seconds, this will give us major resolve to us and our allies in the area, increasing our physical and spell resistance. So that way we can use our combat prayer and then use expanse for us. Frost Cloak to give everybody major and minor resolve just to mitigate a lot of income damages if the dungeon seems a little bit harder. Then over into the Mages Guild, we can use a first ability called Star's Off as Major Light. We then morph it to Inner Light. This we don't really aren't gonna use, like we ain't gonna cast it. But what we want it for is while it's slotted, we get Major Savagery and Prophecy, increasing our weapon and spell critical rating by 2600. And our max magicka is increased by 5%. So this is just kind of a nice way if you use your Blue Betty and an Inner Light, you're getting your Major Sorcery and then you're also getting your Major Prophecy. So I'm getting a lot of that potion that you need to use. And that would be about it. So for the ultimate on the build, oh, we're going to go back all the way down. Where our ultimate is in the assault skill line. Starts off as Warhorn. We then morph it to aggressive Warhorn. This is a 20 meter radius for 30 seconds. This will increase us and our group members. Max magic on max stand by 10% for 30 seconds. So everybody gets a lot larger resource pool so that's kind of nice but we really like it to give the group members major force increasing their critical damage by 20 percent for 10 seconds you kind of want to use this if nobody else in your group is using it that way you can kind of nuke down bosses a little bit faster and clear content a little bit easier because now everybody's going to do a lot more damage now if you have it set up where you, your group needs a little bit more protection you can switch out some ultimates for other stuff another good one is also in the support skill line Starts off as this barrier, then we want to morph it to reviving barrier. This is 12 meters around, so it's a little bit smaller and lasts for 30 seconds, but us and nearby group members will end up having a warp that absorbs up to 3,000 damage for 30 seconds, which is a really, really big damage shield and it helps keep everybody alive. And the nice part about this one, it also heals us and our group members for a good amount of health over the 15 seconds. Now for skill wise, I did forget but we have purge here because we don't have a group cleanse you will need to pick this up because some trials have where you need to cleanse group members or even some dungeons it's kind of nice to have a cleanse this will remove three negative effects from us and our group members and for every negative effect removed, the target is healed for six percent of their max health so we do a little bit of healing on top of removing negative effects to them Now, this will be the passive section here. And as we go over the passives, I will only be going, or I will only be focusing on key passives for the build here. Uh, I still recommend looking at every passive and see how they can help out your build. So we're gonna start off in the Animal Companion skill line. Um, our first passive I want to talk about is Bond with Nature. This heals us every time one of our animal companion skills end. This is very useful with our blue Betty skill since it doesn't cost us anything to use. We can cost it at, you know, we can cast it for no cost and that way it's kind of like a free heal to keep ourselves alive, everything, which is really nice. So since we're only using Growing Swarm, every time Growing Swarm ends, we get some little bit of health back. Uh, next passive I want to talk about is Flourish. This increases our Magicka and Stamina recovery by 12% if an Animal Companion ability is slotted. Since we only have Growing Swarm and it's on our front bar, that's where we're going to get our recovery since our back bar doesn't. But if you would equip Blue Betty, you'd get 12% on both bars. Then. Uh, over into the Green Balance skill line, the one we want to talk about here is Nature's Gift. Uh, we gain 250 Magicka or Stamina based on whatever resource is lower. This only happens if we heal an ally with a green balance skill and can only happen once every second. Uh, this is handy on our swarm ability that is a stam base since we can't heavy attack to gain stam back since we are using a restoration staff and a destruction staff. Next one here I would like to talk about is Emerald Moss. This increases our healing done with green balance abilities by 2% per green balance ability slotted. So we got 2% on our back bar and then we have 4% on our front bar. 
this is very handy on making our heels stronger on a rest of staff bar and that's the bar that i'm on with an additional two percent there then we have maturation which whenever we activate a heal on us or an ally we give minor toughness which increases their max health by 10 percent for 20 seconds which this is really handy in groups overall survivability by giving them more health this makes our job easier on keeping them alive since it's not as easy to kill them now so just keep in mind it's any heal ability so yes our restoration staff abilities work as well uh then i want to go over the winter's embrace skill line this one doesn't have as much since we aren't really benefiting unless we use expansive press cloak but the one i like here is icy aura this just reduces effectiveness of snares applied to us by 15 percent this is really nice for making us more mobile so we don't get caught in bad situation that could potentially kill us so we mitigate some movement speed from that uh then over to the destruction staff uh the one here that i really want to talk about is uh elemental force this increases our chance to apply the status effect by a hundred percent this allows us to have better odds on giving multiple enemies that minor vulnerability especially if they get caught in our blockade of storm on our back bar here uh then we're gonna go over to the restoration staff the one that i really like here is essence drain uh when we complete a heavy attack we gain major mending for four seconds this increases our healing done by 16 percent this gives off bigger heals to every member so it's really nice to do that uh we also give 70 percent of the damage inflicted on the target back as health to any member within 15 meters this gives us another way of to apply that minor toughness to anyone so it's kind of really nice as you can see it only goes down to 60 percent but it only happens if we have a restoration staff equipped so. then the one i want to talk about here is the restoration expert this increases our healing done by 15% on allies under 30%. A great passive every healer needs to have or really should have. This helps us save our allies from near-death experience and getting them back into the fight a little bit quicker. Now, as we go over armor, I will be listing some passives that I found in each skill line that are kind of useful for the light armor. Uh, a lot of these passives for have like for reduction to snares we reduce the cost of magic abilities there's an increase or yeah an increase to our magic recovery there's spell resistance gain there's critical chance have more armor penetration along with other bonuses and penalties with penalties listed here and bonuses there for medium armor as you can see on our advanced build there isn't none but i still like to go it for our beginner build setup so a lot of the passives here in the medium armor uh, give us critical damage and healing. We can reduce the cost of stam abilities, increase stam recovery, increase the damage done, reduce the cost of dodge roll, uh, along with other bonuses. Medium armor doesn't have any penalty, so we get bonuses all from there. And then for heavy armor, there are passives for increased resistance, increased health recovery, resources gained from taking damage there's max health there's more resources back after heavy attack there's healing received along with other bonuses and penalties with penalties listed here and bonuses there for soul magic i like soul summon this just allows us to revive once every hour without spending a soul gem which is really really nice so that way we keep our soul gems to keep our charger on our weapon a lot better or revive allies in the mages guild if you are using inner light the one i would like would probably recommend is use magica Rec controller this will increase our max magica and magica recovery by two percent for slotting our inner light here you could also run mage adept just to reduce the magica cost of the mage guild ability just in case you accidentally hit this that way it don't cost you as much in the Undaunted, we have Undaunted Command. Activating a Synergy restores 4% of our max health, stamina, and magicka, so we get some health. Good amount of health back, good amount of magicka back, and some stamina back, which is really nice to keep our resources flowing. 
Undaunted Metal, this increases our max health, max spam, and max magicka by 2% per type of armor worm. For us, we are only wearing two, and it's heavy and light on this build. For the advanced build beginner, it would be 6% because we are running a heavy, medium, and light on that build. For the support skill line, if you are using Reviving Barrier or even Cleanse, there is a Magic A increasing our Magic Recovery by 10% for each support ability slot. So if you have actually both of them on the back bar, you are going to get 20% more Magic Recovery there. We are running an Argonian on this build. If you so desire, you can change the race. You could run a Breton, you could run a High Elf. You could run a Dark Elf or any other race that you so choose. Just keep in mind, if you do change the race from the Argonian, things are going to change. However, I like to run the Argonian due to the fact that we get Life Mender, increasing our healing done by 6%, which increases a lot of what we do as a healer, which is really, really nice. That way we have stronger heals all around. Then there is Argonian Resistance, increasing our max health by 1,000, and our Disease and Poison Resistance by 2,300, which is... Nice, because there are a lot of disease and poison effects out there, but max health keeps us alive a little bit easier. And then we got Resourceful, increasing our max magic and max stam, so we get all max increase to each ability, health, or attribute, health, magic, and stamina, which is really nice, but we really like it for whenever we drink a potion, we restore 3,000 health, magic, and stamina as well, so we get a lot more when we pop potions as well. For alchemy, you will want to get medicinal use. This will increase the uh, effects of your potions 30% longer. So I base your potions only last buffs that apply it for it only lasts 39 seconds. So you have nine seconds of no buffs being applied for your potions. So with medicinal use, your potions now last 47 seconds. So get medicinal use, it keeps everything up a lot. And then over to provisioning, the one I would use here is Concier. This adds 20 minutes to the duration of any consumed drink. We are running drinks on this build. If you do end up running a food, then you would want Gourmet because this adds 20 minutes to the duration of any eaten food. Now going over the gear, we are going to start off with our beginner healer setup first. So first, Flottables, it will be on both builds. You can use the Ghastly Eyeball. This will increase your max magic and magic recovery for 2.2 hours, which is really nice because the more magic we have and magic recovery definitely helps with our healing. But if you have trouble keeping yourself alive, a really good one to use is the Witch Mother's Potent Brew, which increases max magic, gives us health, and gives us some magic recovery. For potions on the build, whether advanced or beginner, we are using Essence of Spell Power. This gives us Major Sorcery, increasing our spell damage by 20%, Major Prophecy, which increases our spell critical rating, and then we restore 7,500 Magicka immediately, which also grants us Major Intellect, increasing our Magicka recovery by 30%. Now, for the weapons that we have on our front bar, we are running the Restoration Staff of Julianos. This has the Weakening Enchantment just to reduce the target's damage with their weapon and spell damage for five seconds is really nice so that way allies don't get hit as hard with the power trade on this one this will just increase the healing done by eight percent so it makes our heals a lot stronger for our beginner build now a part of the loot love julianos this is found in warthgar so you need to have access to warthgar in order to make this set this is a crafted set and love julianos set gives us critical chance max magica more critical chance and we, yes, we are not running a five piece bonus on this build. For the back bar, we are running the Lightning Staff of Julianos with the Crusher Enchantment just to reduce the target's physical and spell resistance by 1800. As I explained earlier, the lower the enemy's resistance is, the stronger your DPS will hit. We have the Infused Trait, just increase the weapon enchantment's effectiveness, so the enchantment that we have here, and reduce the enchantment's cooldown by 50%, so we have more uptime with our Crusher Enchant. For the head on this build, we have the Helmet of Lu Juliana, so this is a heavy armor piece with max health enchantment on this. Everything on the build will have divine traits. The Chets is the Robe of Combat Position. This is a max magic enchantment with divine traits. 
and combat physician is found in Wayrest Sewers dungeon, so it is in base game, so you won't need other content for that one. So for two pieces, we get max magicka, three piece more critical chance, four piece more critical chance. Nice bonus up here is when we critically heal ourselves or an ally, we grant our target a damage shield that absorbs 4,000 damage for six seconds. This effect can occur once every six seconds per target. So what that means is if we heal Jimmy over on the left side and we critically heal him, he gets a damage shield. Now two seconds later, we then heal Hector in front of us and we critically heal him. Now he has a damage shield now for six seconds. Jimmy on our left again still has his damage shield now for four more seconds. Then on our right, we could then heal somebody else and critically heal them when those when uh, Hector in front of us is down to four more seconds on his damage shield and Jimmy on our left is down to two more seconds. So what this really is nice about is we can give out multiple damage shields and we can hit multiple targets. It's not just located oh this target this target and this target only it's we can hit we can hit up 12 people at one time if we really we're really really good and got our crit chance so the higher our critical chance on this build the better it will be and again remember this is the beginner setup so like our skills and character sheet actually is a lot different on this one our critical or spell critical is a lot better we can actually buff ourselves up Right now we have a 38.5% chance. So it's definitely better than the 29%, not perfect, but again, you can change out your boon or mundus if you want. don't want the ritual to have more critical chance, you can. Now for soldiers, we have armed corpse of Julianos. This is medium armor, so that way we enhance our undaunted passive with one heavy, one medium, and one light, at least on the build. Hoist is combat position, max magic and enchantment on this one. And I forgot the shoulders will have max stamina and enchantment on the build. Hands, legs, and feet will all have max magicka divine traits on everything. Now for accessories, we have the willpower set. Neck is with spell damage, with ring, and with the rings also having spell damage as well. All in a healthy trait just to give ourselves a nice comfortable health pool on the build. So the willpower set that we get from doing random dungeons, so it's kind of nice just doing your random dailies, you'll end up getting a set unlocked for you. But we can get the willpower set, adds 1,600 max magicka, and adds 199 weapon and spell damage. So we have a really, really big pool, especially for a low level healer of 33.2k max magicka. Now for champion points for our beginner setup, this was based off of 300 CP. So in the green tree, what we have slotted here is we have treasure hunter, increasing the quality of items we find in treasure chests. That's the way we can try to get more purple items. Then we have rationer with 10 minutes for the food or drink that we have just to kind of get that going for us. And then we have five points in steed blessing just to give us a 2% movement speed. Over into the blue tree, what we have here is starting with in our master creation we have 10 points from the brink which gives everybody a damage shield if they are under 25 percent health for six seconds and this can affect once every 30 seconds per target so if you have low health on an enemy they will get a 2200 damage shield and then if you critically heal them too as well then they're also going to get your combat physician damage shield as well then we have ever living overflow this will increase us and our allies health magicka and stamina recovery equal to 0.5 percent of our max magicka which we will have 150 more health magicka and stamina recovery on this build and this can affect once every second or can occur once every 12 seconds per target so again per target type of thing and last for six seconds and then what we have here then is swift renewal this is just increases the healing done with heal over time effects by two percent and then another soothing tie increase the healing done by area of effects by two percent we have a lot of healing over time and we have a lot of uh area of effect healing on the build and then in the red tree we have 
five points into Bondless Vitality, granting us 140 max health. Fortified just gives us 173 armor. And then we have Rejuvenate, gives us nine health magic on stamina recovery. Yes, it's low, but remember this is only for a level 300 CP, so you only have 100 CP to deal with. And then our last one here that we have a lot of points is Expert Evasion. After we roll dodge, it's free. And after that, if we do not roll dodge for another 30 seconds, it becomes free again. But if we roll dodge within the 30 seconds, then it costs stamp. Okay, going over our advanced healer setup. I'm gonna go all the way back up to the top. Bottle items. No different than our beginners. We have the Ghastly Eyeball. Increased Max Magicka is what we use most of the time, and Magicka Recovery because I can sustain well enough. But if you do find yourself struggling in dungeons and not having enough health, then use the Witch Mother's Potent Brew. Just to give yourself Max Magicka, Max Health, and Magic Recovery. Essence of Spell Power is what we're using for Potion, just to give us Major Sorcery that has a spell damage increased by 20%. Major Prophecy gives us Critical Chance Rating, and then gives us major intellect increasing our magic recovery by 30% on top of giving us some magicka back immediately after using the potion along with our Argonian resourceful passive as well. Now for weapons on the build. Our restoration staff is part of the spell power cure resto staff with the weakening enchantment just to reduce the target's weapon to spell damage by 320. That way they don't hit our allies as hard and that way they can survive a little bit better. We want the power trait here just to increase our healing done by 8%. Now the spell power cure set. Two pieces max magicka, three piece max magicka again, four piece add 124 weapon and spell damage and the five piece bonus is when we overheal an ally we give them major courage for five seconds which increases their weapon and spell damage by 430. This is found in the white golden tower and the reason I like to use this one over let's say Alarime is this keeps us mobile. Spell power cure is whenever an ally, as it says, when you overheal them. So if you keep them at max health and overheal them, they're getting major courage. All remake is an area of effect. It is about roughly the size of this carpet here for all remake. And what it is, is basically it does the same thing, but targets need to actually walk in that area in order to get that major courage. If your targets don't walk in that area for Alarime, they don't get major courage. This is kind of why I like to use Spell Power Cure over Alarime. However, if you are in a well-coordinated group, even in trials, if you're in a normal trial too, Alarime will probably perform better just because of the fact that everybody will probably stack a lot nicer, and that way you can apply major courage to everybody in that setting. But choices are yours if you want to use Spell Power Cure or use all Alarime. I just prefer Spell Power Cure and just the way my build set up. Max Magicka, Max Magicka, and Spell Damage is kind of nice for me. On the back bar, we are using a Lightning Staff with the Crusher Enchantment. Just to reduce the target's physical and spell resistance by 1,800, which is really nice because the lower the enemy's armor is, the stronger your DPS will hit. Now we want the Infused Trait just to increase our pressure enchantment rating also reduces the enchantment cooldown by 50 percent so we ha can have higher uptime and of pressure enchantment not really higher uptime more of we can proc it more often of applying the crusher enchantment for the helm on this we are using the symphony of blaze visage this is a heavy armor piece this will give us our bonus of four percent from the undaunted passive because this is our one heavy the rest will be light armor we have max health enchantment here, divine traits on every piece from head to toe. And this is the Symphony Blade set found in the Depths of Malatar. Veteran Depths of Malatar, this is the monster heaven from there. And we only have one piece of this, this just adds 4% healing done. It's just to increase our healing done. You can run other monster helms that apply, give us additional add 4% healing done. I believe Troll king from the blessed crucible also has a four percent healing done if you are looking for more of a base game monster helm if you do not have our mythic that we'll go over later i will explain more on the two piece bonus as well now for the body pieces we are running the stone talker's robe here with max magic enchantment here now, what Stone Talker Oath set does, this is from the trial of Rockgrove. 
This gives us Magicka Recovery, gives us Minor Aegis, at all times reducing our damage taken from Dungeon Trials and Arena Monsters by 5%, makes us a little bit tankier so we don't die as easy, and that way we kind of stay alive easier. More Magicka Recovery, and when we fully charge Heavy Attack, place a Bomb Soul on our target that charges as the target takes damage. After 10 seconds, the bomb explodes, restoring 5% of the damage received as Stamina and Magicka up to 200 or 2200 stamina and magic out to 12 group members within 60 meters of the explosion this effect can occur once every 10 seconds so the bomb solo can be placed it lasts for 10 seconds and then when it blows up we can immediately heavy attack again and place it on them so typically if you know when you're getting closer to your set 10 seconds start fully heavy attacking so that way when you are done fully heavy attacking you can place another bomb solo immediately on them this is just really helpful to keep our resources to the group especially if you are heavy tank or heavy attacking the boss where the tank is that way you keep up the tank's resource as well for the shoulder this is a mythic item it is spalders of ruin this is max magica divine traits on this one now this is a one piece bonus activating crouch will have an order of pride up to six allies in that aura gain 260 weapon and spell damage but we reduce our health, magic, and stamina recovery by 70 for each, for every ally benefiting from our area of pride. So basically what that is, is as we crouch here, if you see that red circle out there, that is our aura. It's kind of that red smoke coming off of us. So we need to crouch to activate it. And if we crouch, it's deactivated. So again, crouch. Oop, gotta wait. There, I'm fully up. Now I'm down. Should have proc, but... There we go, not procced. So yes, crouch to proc it, stand up. Hopefully I can get it this time. Yep, crouch again to deactivate it. Now, if you do not have access to this mythic because it's a bunch of pieces that you will need from Vanguard, World Boss, it's a lot of DLCs that you gotta get with this. And if you prefer not to use Spalder of Ruin and rather use the Symphony of Blades, we will want to then use medium armor symphony of blades with our max stamina enchantment and what the two-piece bonus on this if we decide to run the two-piece bonus is when we heal an ally who is under 50 percent of their primary resource grant them meridian's favor which restores 550 magicka and stamina every one second for six seconds this effect can occur once every 18 seconds per target so we can heal again it's kind of like our combat position i was talking about in the beginner healer setup that you can heal multiple targets and this can affect multiple targets if our stone talker isn't really giving everybody or it's not hitting everybody it's kind of nice especially in larger trial groups this works very very well for the waste we have max magica again stone talker from waist hands legs and feet with all max magica enchantment divine traits on the jewelry here we have our spell power cure on the jewelry here with our necklace having a spell damage trait with healthy, or I should say healthy trait, spell damage enchantment, and magicka recovery enchantment on the rings with arcane trait. Now champion points on the build for the advanced setup. In the green tree we have sodables, we have treasure hunter, just to increase the quality of items fine, that way we have more purple items. Then we have Rationer adds 30 minutes to the duration of any food or drink that we have, which for us it'll be drinks, and 75 points into liquid efficiency for potions or poisons that we use have a 10% chance not to be consumed, which is nice to save us on some of those expensive spell power or spell power pots. And then 50 points into Steed's Blessing just to give us a 20% movement speed out of combat. Over in the blue tree, not a whole lot different here we have 50 points into from the brink whenever we heal an ally under 25 percent we give them a damage shield this one will be 11,000 damage shield that will be on them for six seconds and this kind of this effect can only occur once every 30 seconds per target so we can hit different targets within the 30 second cooldown on our first target and 50 points into ever, ever living overflow this just increases us and group members that we heal with Health, Magicka, and Stamina Recovery equal to 0.5 of our Max Magicka. For us, it will be 150 since we have a lot of Max Magicka. For 6 seconds, they will have 150 
health, magic, and stamina recovery. And this can effect can occur once every 12 seconds per target, so we can again hit multiple targets within the first target's cooldown. Then we have Swift Renewal. This will increase our healing done by 10% with overtime effects. We have a lot of those in our build. On top of increase our healing done with area of effects by 10%, we have a lot of those that kind of actually overlap on this build. Again, kind of go over some of these because some of these are important. We have Eldridge, more Magicka. We have Tyra's Discipline for more Stam. We have points into here just to increase, especially this one, increase our healing taken. So that way, if other people are healing, it's nice. But this has a lot to do with damage reduction, so we don't die as easy from like elements. Here's physical stuff like poisons, disease, and bleeds. And then we got our critical chance right here. And then we have chances to apply better status effects, especially magicka status effects on this side of the tree, increasing our weapon and spell damage with magical attacks and then physical is on this side over into the red tree we have rejuve just to give us 90 more health magic and stand recovery especially if we're using spell of rune it comes in handy to kind of mitigate some of that recovery that we lose from spalder's rune then we have fortified just give us more armor so that way we mitigate a little bit more damage then we have boneless vitality for more health and then our last slotable is Expert Invasion, just to not consume spam for a dual roll dodge, so we can roll dodge once, and then wait 30 seconds, we can do it again for free. If we do it within that time period of 30 seconds, then it will cost spam again. And we got Defiance, just to reduce the roll dodge or break free. Here's Tumbling, just to reduce the roll dodge cost. Then we have Mighty mighty here just to reduce the duration of elemental stats effects applied to us and then we got more health given here then we have pierce engage it's mostly just to get into tempered soul just return after being raised because we can die and it happens everybody does die just to have 10 percent more resources when we come back from the dead then we got wind chaser just pretty much hasty just increase our movement speed so we can sprint get places a little quicker and then reduce the cost of sprinting since we don't have a whole lot of stamina. That way we can use it for our growing swarm ability. And then we just got fortified here just when we block, mitigate some damage. And then Tireless Guardian reduce the cost of blocking. And then we have increased our movement speed while bracing by 6%, especially if we just need to move a little bit while bracing, so holding block. This will wrap it up for our Warden Healer. Thank you for your time today. I appreciate you making time for watching my video. Make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. It is free and goes a long way to help reach others and help in the YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay up to date with future content, click the bell icon to get notified when I make a new video. If you want to hang out, you can follow me over at Twitch. I typically play as a weekend warrior over there, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you are wanting to message me directly, you can do that over at Twitter. Thank you guys so much, and I hopefully will see you in game or in the next video.